Okay, so I guess this has been the hottest debate uh, in the Browns community, at least online, right? Should Kevin stay? Should Kevin go? Now, before I get into this conversation, I want to bring up both sides of this argument. I would say this first. This discourse is starting to remind me of the discourse that we had Literally around this time last year, because this year, last year, this is when Baker had that three interception game. And that was the straw that broke a lot of people's backs with him as quarterback. This seems to have had a similar effect with some fans with Kevin Stefanski to where this game, for whatever reason, is the one that broke their backs. People who were Watson, like were in favor of moving on to a new quarterback and even people who. And obviously people who still kind of hold a grudge about the whole Baker thing. So it's not just the Baker bros or the people who wanted Baker to stay and blame Stefanski for that that are upset. There are a lot of people who were fine with that move that are upset now, right? So I don't want to make this seem like people are just acting out of bad faith who have this opinion because it's well beyond that point. Uh, Now, first thing to know about this is What's going to happen with this position is going to be similar to quarterback, but there's going to be a little bit of a difference here, right? Because ultimately, Kevin's in the position of where I think he's safe if they don't feel like they can upgrade. But what's an upgrade at coach, right? Quarterback's different. You can look at accolades. You can look at stats. You can look at numbers, advanced numbers, QBR, PFF grade, all that to determine if one guy's a clear upgrade over another. Ultimately, these guys play on the field. And you know when one quarterback's better, right? It wasn't a stretch to say that Deshaun Watson is a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield. Like, that that was never a stretch. And it still is not a stretch, right? Like, that was pretty obvious. But when it comes to coaching, we're talking about two different things, right? Because let's say Jim Harbaugh is available. Is that a clear upgrade over Kevin Stefanski? You could say he went to a Super Bowl. A lot of coaches have gone to a Super Bowl, haven't been really good, right? I mean, I can name what Mike McCarthy's a coach, and not a lot of people want to went to a Super Bowl. Um, Levy Smith went to a Super Bowl, not a lot of people want him. Um, there, there's what's his name in, in Jim Caldwell or yeah Caldwell went to a Super Bowl with Indy. Nobody seems to want him. Doug Peterson went to a Super Bowl. And some people like him now that he's re- kind of like they're still under 500, but the Jags have had a little bit of a resurgence. But before that, nobody was really on that. So going to a Super Bowl is not the end all be all as a coach. A lot of coaches get to a Super Bowl. A lot of coaches have pretty average careers after that. Right. So is that a clear upgrade? And here's ultimately what it's going to come down to. The Browns are going to make a move on head coach based on what the Haslam's feel like is a upgrade or not. Right. If the Haslam's feel like there is a clear upgrade out there that they can get. They'll take it. Right. If they can get their hands on Sean Payton, very unrealistic. But if they could, they would. They would do it. But. Is that what they feel like is a a clear upgrade? Because this thing is a lot more subjective than quarterback. I can sit here right now. Like, none of us really think Matt Nagy is a clear upgrade over Kevin Stefanski, but Jimmy might, right? Because this thing isn't really – this thing is a lot more subjective than we think. So that's what it's going to determine – well, that's what's going to determine this whole thing, right? What do Jimmy Haslam and D. Haslam feel like is a clear upgrade? Now, given their track record, I hope it's not just coming down to them. I really hope Deep Dest is involved. I hope Andrew Barry's involved because we have seen what happens when the Haslams are the only people involved in hiring a head coach. Disaster. Pure disaster, right? That's how we lose out on Sean McDermott because we want to hire Freddie Kitchens. Well, no, no, no. We want to hire Hugh Jackson. So we we didn't hire Sean McDermott. That's how we end up with Freddie Kitchens. That's how we end up with all of the coach, like what Mike Mike Petten, um what was his name? What was it? He was a, oh Chud Chazinski. Like all these bad coaches that we've had over the years since 2012 when Haslam's bought the team. We know they kind of stink at this. 
right? You know, whether they hire a firm or not, like it, it's been bad. They they get the the thing with the Haslam's is I think they're good people and all that, and I know there are people who weirdly defend the Haslam's for whatever reason. Um, I'm not one of those people, but the Haslam's and specifically Jimmy Haslam has proven himself in a lot of facets to be an easily swindable guy. Like, you can swindle Jimmy Haslam. It's not very hard. Like, you ever hear these stories about, like, these tech bu- these tech entrepreneurs and they go in and, and they fool all these, like, Silicon Valley guys into giving them a bunch of money? Jimmy Haslam is absolutely one of those guys you can fool. And I don't say that for no reason, but, like, look at the people who have swindled him in the past. Uh, if you look into the pilot flying J thing, either Jimmy Haslam was acting maliciously in that whole uh, 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 scheme that they were running or he was so easily swindable right so there's not really a great outcome that can come out there but again easily swindable guy this is a guy who led the charge for lane kiffin to be uh the tennessee head coach i mean pushing for lane kiffin kind of shows how easily swindable you are uh with the hugh jackson stuff giving hugh jackson another year like having to be forced to fire hugh jackson when he won like a game a game this man is swindable, right? Uh, drafting Johnny Manziel because somebody told him to do it, right? Like this man is easily scammed is what I'm saying. And that's why he should not be at the forefront of decisions for head coaches because nobody can scam you. There are no, there is no greater concentration of, of, con men and scam artists at times or people who have the similar traits to con men and scam artists than football coaches like i look at what jim hersey did with hiring uh jeff saturday oh oh no doubt no doubt jimmy hassan would try to hire joe thomas or somebody like that right like there's no doubt in my mind that that is also a move like some of these people are easily swindable. I think Jimmy Haslam has identified himself and has been proven to be in multiple facets of his life somebody who's easily swindable, which is why the whole prospect of like moving on from Kevin to find a clear upgrade concerns me because if this upgrade is what Jimmy Haslam feels like is an upgrade, then it doesn't have a great chance of working out. I'm just going to be point blank, period. You get that man checkbook, expectations, and and, and a big enough will to want to hire. Like, he will hire anybody, and that's a problem sometimes because he will hire anybody. Now, that being said, let's talk about Kevin's case, right? Let's, Let's hope that we're living in a logical world in which Jimmy Haslam does not do something crazy, Okay. He, he doesn't do something that, that, that proves himself to be what everybody says he is. Let's look at the negatives for Kevin Stefanski. I think we could say play calling at times rough. Sometimes it's great, but in situation, he's no, he's no Kyle Shanahan is what I'll say when it comes to play calling. And what I mean by that is Kyle Shanahan will never really outsmart himself. Honestly, when Kyle Shanahan has outsmarted himself, he's learned from it, right? The one time in the Super Bowl where he called on 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 the pass plays um, at the end of it, that's where he realized, oh, I outsmarted myself. I'll never do that again. And he kind of overcorrected and runs the ball like a million times in those situations. I think Kevin has a weird tendency to not flip-flop, but like either he's going to be super aggressive or he's going to be super conservative. I don't think he manages the game well with the lead. I think that's been a problem. We haven't been able to see it because this team hasn't had a lead. But I'm pretty sure if we look at blown leads over the last three years, he's up there um, in, in with the most or, or up there with some of the most. Now, it has a lot to do with his defenses, but his choice of defensive coordinator also is not a positive in this conversation. So that's another thing to throw in the negative category. Um, So right now we got play calling, his choice of of assistants. I can't name you a single assistant that he's hired. And I'm talking about like the 
coordinator level assistant. It's not like the under level. Like uh, obviously Stump Mitchell good hire, right? Obviously Bill Callahan great hire. But then you look at the senior um, assistants, Mike Prefer, terrible jobs he's been doing. Um, Joe Woods, bad job he's been doing. And then you look at Alex Van Pelt, and we don't really know what he does because Kevin's in charge of the offense. Kevin calls the plays. What does AVP do? Is he just a glorified quarterbacks coach? I don't know. Or does he do a lot more than what's been put on? And maybe we're giving Kevin too much credit when it comes to what gets done in this offense. Either way, AVP is not somebody you could say, man, that dude should be a head coach somewhere or or anything even close to that. We don't even know if he's good or not. It's kind of like, hey, you know, what do you do with that? Um, so I don't think he's hired great coordinators. I don't think you can say any of these were home runs. And, look, they don't have to be home runs. But, like, I don't even think you can say that any of these were doubles because, like, there's nothing I can point to. It's like, man, that coordinator was fire. You know what I mean? Like, I've had to sit here and make arguments to fire all three coordinators throughout these three years, right? Last year, I thought that AVP should be fired. The year before that, well, the year after that, right, this year, I'm talking about both the defensive and special teams coordinators should be fired. So, that's not a good job in hiring your assistants. He has to do better if he gets another chance to um, because these assistants have let him down. Um, and ultimately, it's his decision to make for who his assistants are going to be. So if they fail, that's going to reflect on him. He has to do a better job. Um, so I think those are the main problems, right? Assistant hires and Play calling are, are the main things there, right? I think he's done a good job with locker room management for the most part. I think he's done a good job um, with offensive scheming as well. Like I think the offense has been better for the most part the last three years than it's not. Um, I think he's done a good job with the offensive line and, and the run game for the most part. Um, you know, I think there's some positive there for him. Now, where do I land on this? Look, I'm not going to make a definitive decision on what I think Kevin's future should be until the season is over. I'm going to give him the same courtesy that I gave Baker Mayfield, right? Because I gave Baker Mayfield until he decided he did not want to play in that last game all that time to be evaluated because I wanted to evaluate the whole season. I'm going to be that same level of fair to Kevin Stefanski right now. There are two different barometers for me. Me personally, I would rather just keep Kevin Stefanski at this point. I don't think there's a clear upgrade out there. Um, and even the clear upgrades like what Sean Payton, I don't know how much of an upgrade that is versus how much of it of an upgrade it's perceived to be. Because I'm just not that familiar with Sean Payton's work on an up close and personal level. Obviously, I know he had a lot of success with the Saints. But on a up-close personal level, I, I, I'm not really familiar with it, and I don't think a lot of Browns fans are. We're just kind of familiar with the record. So I, I would have to be more familiar with what he does to be able to make that shining endorsement. It's not like he's an undeniable guy. It's not like you're hiring Bill Belichick in his prime or something like that, right? Um, but I also feel like Kevin has done things to justify why people want to get him out of here, right? One, he's been here a long time. The team's only been to playoffs one time, um, and that was in the COVID year. And things were just different in the COVID year, right? So we can't really credit that as um, – point to that as much as we want to because we know that there was no crowd noise that year. Browns had special circumstances when it came to health. Baker probably played the best year of his career that year. Like all of these things were in line for him. Um, that being said, though, you know, this is just kind of a toss-up at this point. I think Kevin should stay. But I also don't feel like the – momentum is in that direction because I don't know where Jimmy Haslam's head's at. Jimmy might want to be at a point to where he doesn't want to make these decisions anymore. And it seems like the last three, four years, he's been at that place where he doesn't want to make these decisions anymore because he knows that he's not good at it or has some level of awareness of it. And he is now deciding to delegate, which I think is overall a positive decision for the health of this franchise. But the stakes are higher now. 
you have a quarterback that you just put 230 in the tank for, right? I don't know if the stakes being higher changes his approach. If he stays the same and if he stays his approach. And look, here's the thing where I'll be fair to Jimmy Haslam. I've been pretty critical of him throughout this video. But here's where I'll be fair to the Haslams. They haven't fired anybody that, like, made you feel like they shouldn't have been fired, though, right? Like, there hasn't been a single firing that didn't make sense. Honestly, it's been in the opposite direction, right? The only guy that they fired where it didn't – well, they 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 kind of made a decision to keep where it didn't make sense was Hugh Jackson going into that third year after one win. He's decided to give him an extra six games, right? But everybody else, if he fired him, it made sense. Right. Um, Freddie Kitchens. You can't tell me that didn't make sense. You can't sit here and look me in the eye and tell me that didn't make sense. Um, ultimately, when John Dorsey was willing to down to Freddie Kitchens Hill, that made sense. Uh, when he fired Hugh Jackson, that made more than much sense. It made a ton of sense. Right. Before that was firing Mike Patton. That made sense. Once Mike Patton lost Kyle Shanahan. Mike Patton really didn't have anything to stand on. That team went like two wins, I think, that year. Um, the year before that, who was before? Oh, Chud. Yeah, that made sense. And if we go before Chud, who was before Chud? Because Chud, we didn't even want Chud that year. It was, they was trying to get Josh McDaniels, which, again, trying to get Josh McDaniels three times kind of demonstrates to me that the Haslams are easily swindled. Because there is no there is no fraud bigger than Josh McDaniel. I've been saying this for like three, four years that Josh McDaniels is a complete fraud. It's finally being proven to be true. But that's what I'm saying, man. Like these this is why we can't just say, oh, these guys are clear upgrades to Kevin Stefanski. This is obviously who they're gonna go with. There is a chance that this man could get swindled by anybody. I've seen it. Chip Kelly, remember that? Y'all don't remember Chip. I know this is random, but Chip Kelly is perfect proof of how easily swindled Jimmy Haslam was. Jimmy Haslam got swindled by Chip Kelly to the point where Chip Kelly got more money out of Philly. I think that was one of his first moves. Maybe that wasn't Jimmy. I don't know. But if that was Jimmy, that proves the point. If it wasn't, then I'm, I apologize for adding that to your resume. But yeah, Chip Kelly, man. Like, but to his credit, I was in the middle of giving him credit, my bad. Uh, but to his credit, he has not fired anybody where you're like, man, that was a bad decision. That came early, right? Chud was on time. Mike Patton was on time. Uh, Freddie Kitchens was on time. He got criticized because he fired somebody after a year because we always do that. But, like, that wasn't a bad decision, honestly. So when it comes to firing, he doesn't make these decisions I don't feel like he makes them emotionally. I think he actually thinks these things out. The hiring is where I worry about Jimmy Haslam. So I think they're going to make a reasonable decision here when it comes to firing him unless he decides he make, wants to make an unreasonable decision with what he feels like is an upgrade. That's why I think that's what matters. Who has Jimmy Haslam's, who has Jimmy Haslam's ear? Is it Depot? Is it Andrew Barry? If it's those two, I feel good about the decisions going forward. If it's somebody else, though, we in trouble. Or at least, we at least gonna have a new head coach. But that's my thoughts on this whole thing. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a good night.